YouTubers, Pastor Bob. Hey, uh, we're out here in the garage doing a little filming today. We got Brody barking at cats. We got the neighbor doing his yard. But there's nothing you can do about noise pollution. So anyway, listen, I wanted to talk to you for just a minute about my 1996 Ford Explorer. This is my 1996 Ford Explorer that I bought uh, about six months ago. But anyway, it's a, it's a 96, which makes it 24 years old. But believe it or not, it's only got 68,000 original miles on it. Most likely a one older car. Uh, there's not a single nick in the paint anywhere. There's not one nick in the paint. There's not a nick anywhere. Even the, uh, even the interior on the inside doesn't have a single mark on it. As you can see from the interior, uh, there's not a nick in it. There's no wear marks. It's all beautiful leather interior just like the day it was new. It's absolutely flawless. There's one thing wrong with the car. And that is the cruise control nubbies are a little bit wore out on both sides. And it's not from wear, it's, from, uh, it's just from age. This is quite common on Ford Explorers. So these little two little switches right here at the Ford dealer, they're $225 and then about another $125 to put them in. Well, I found these two little switches, little Chinese knockoffs on eBay for $25, bucks, and now I'm going to change them. So uh, there's a couple things you got to remember. Number one, this is an airbag. So if you ever go to mess with anything on a steering wheel, the very first thing you do is you disconnect the battery. So we're going to do that first. And then after you disconnect it, you got to wait a full 20 minutes for all the capacitors to uh, discharge their voltage. So that's what we're going to do first. So here are my new switches. Like I say, $225 at the Ford dealer, $25 on Amazon. And what I'll do is I'll change the switches, but I won't change my wiring harness because I'm sure that my original Ford wiring harness is a thousand times better than this uh, cheap Chinese knockoff. So anyway, as soon as the airbag's ready, we'll be in there doing it. Guys, listen, if you want to really get hurt in a car, the way to do it is not understanding how the airbags work. And uh, anytime you go to work on a steering wheel, if you don't disconnect the battery, you could run into serious problems. If there was a ratchet or a socket, you left anything on this airbag and it went off, it would put it right through your head. Uh, I've seen stories where people were driving down the road in the passenger seat and have their feet up on the dash right here. It, it folded them in half and broke both their hips, took them right out of the sockets. So uh, yeah, airbags are dangerous and I don't mess with them. Car that I gotta change, and you'll notice I have a cassette deck. So uh, that's the next thing I'm gonna do is put a new stereo in it. It's only six screws that we have to be concerned with. This whole job would normally only take 30 minutes, but because I'm gonna be filming it, it'll probably take me about an hour. But the first thing you do is take off these two little covers right here and inside those little covers are two little eight millimeter bolts that hold the airbag in. So we're going to take that off first. There's the airbag. And what we're going to do is we're just going to put it up out of the way. We're going to call that good. Bag up out of the way. That was just two screws. Now all we're going to do is take out this screw, this screw, this screw, and this screw. That'll allow these to come off and the new ones to go in. Like I say, I'm not gonna change my uh, wiring harness because my wiring harness is perfect. It's an original Ford and I think it's a lot better than that $20 Chinese knockoff. So let me go ahead and get these, uh, get these traded out and I'll show you what it looks like.
lost the screw but found it. Not easy to use both hands and yet uh, trying to unscrew all this at the same time. Okay, here's this one. And what we're going to do is we're just going to reach up there, see if we can't get that wiring harness out, which we just did. And here's the new one. Okay, there's that one. You see how simple that is? There's really nothing to it. As long as that airbag doesn't go off in your face, you're all right. Uh oh. Mayday, mayday, we lost a screwdriver. How the heck did we lose a screwdriver? We're sitting right here. All right, nice. Oh, there it is. What's this? when I find parts on the floor. Okay, done, done. Let's get this off of here. Get that wire off. There's the old, there's the new. All right, let's get this wire plugged in there uh, I had to uh, quit filming and use both hands when I went to put the airbag in because it had to be exactly precise but anyway, I got it all buttoned back up. All of our switches are completely new. You can see the speedometer on the car. But anyway, uh, yeah, fairly, fairly simple job. Probably took me total about 20 minutes. But anyway, you would think, now when you're all done, right? Switches are in, airbags in, everything's fine. You would think, okay, I'm done. Now I'm just going to put the key in and start the car up. Not so fast, Pilgrim. You don't want to do that. And this is why. Hey guys, listen. When you get done with a steering wheel like that and you've got everything back together and the battery is reconnected, you don't sit here and put the key in and turn it in case something's wrong. This will blow up right in your face. So you always get off to the side, stick it in, turn it, and everything works.